Hey guys, we are doing another camping trip and today we're exploring a little bit of a loophole in free camping on Crown Land. I'll explain that in a bit, but I have a wood stove and a tent to set up, so I'm going to get right into that. We'll start a fire and I'll explain how I'm camping here for free, legally, I think. This setup may look new to some of my new subscribers that haven't seen my winter camping things yet, but my old subscribers recognize this guy for sure. And I'll just recap it quickly for anybody that's uh, interested in what's going on here. This is a Rapala Asylum for Ice Fishing Shack. As far as I understand, they're out of production. I did have a subscriber that found a link for them somewhere, but I've got thousands of comments and I really can't find which one that was. But this is a Alpine Camp Chef wood stove. I put a stove jack, I cut a hole in this uh, ice fishing shack uh, that provides heat in here. And there is no floor because it's for ice fishing. So I don't find that affects it for what I use it for. Uh, we don't have any snakes here. There's no poisonous spiders, no scorpions, nothing like that that'll crawl in here. And I also keep my shoes on until I fall asleep. So it's not a big deal, but it's a little windy. I'm gonna get this thrown together, get a fire started and really try to batten this thing down so it doesn't blow away on us. Ha! So the wind was a little more windy than I anticipated and that all just blew over. So I've thrown it back together I put some boulders around the outside. You're gonna ask why I don't have tent pegs. This thing actually came with ice anchors, which are not gonna work on soil like this. So I'm gonna see what I can find for tent pegs. But this stove, it, all, it comes with a damper here so we can kind of keep the heat in or open it full, full on to get the fire started. There's uh, joints here that all go together. It starts as five inches down here, and then by the end, it's six inches. Uh, some people point out that it looks like they're in the wrong way, the way the joints go together. And that's true for a gas-fired appliance. I'm a gas fitter, so I know that for that's what we have to use for best practice uh, for venting connections. But on a wood stove, they tend to go in the other way, where the crimped end goes in to the piece below it. And that is to keep any creosote just dripping down the inside of the chimney instead of dripping out through the joints. So we're going to get a little fire started and a well-deserved step two now that I look like a chimney sweep. But here we go. Time to bushcraft a little fire here. We're going to throw in, of course, our smaller pieces. Some are already charred. They're going to burn pretty good. A lot of this wood was left here by the last people, so that's very nice of them. We did bring our own because these forests are picked pretty clean. It's hard to find uh, hard to find any good wood around here. <clears throat> so, give your fire a little bit of gas. That's going to help it get started. Don't cook on that until that burns off. But as always, don't keep the gas can close by when you're lighting. Don't pour gas onto a fire that's burning already. And actually, just try not to do anything I do. Now you're camping with Steve. 
So today, step two has been sponsored by these wonderful people who have made this camping possible, raft possible, which we'll be getting out on the river next week. It'll be this river actually. And uh, can't thank you guys enough. Can't thank you enough for everybody that's subscribed. But we'll keep this short, pay gratitude to these fine folks there. And I'm gonna pour myself a little bit of Bodacious Pinot Grigio on sale in a little camping glass. Yum yum. Don't bring stemware when you're camping for obvious reasons. It will get destroyed. So I'm gonna have a little beverage here and we're gonna explore. There has been people camped here all summer. There's actually garbage we're gonna have to haul out of here for sure when we leave because they're gonna close this place down in a matter of seconds. And I'll explain the legalities of where we are on Crown land in the federal waterway, the high water mark and all that sort of interesting nitty gritty portions of the, the legal framework of camping. So thanks for watching so far. Promises to be a good trip. Okay, we are on county land right now and that's how we can access this. So we don't have to cross any private property to get here and it's all crown land, which in Canada is public land we're allowed to camp on, up to the high water mark. I'm here with beautiful wife today and she's camping with me and she doesn't like to appear on camera. Some people may know because internet can be mean place sometimes and nobody needs to deal with that unless they have to. I signed up for it, she didn't. So we're gonna go check this place out a little bit. It is a bit of an open camp and in the summertime, people kind of set up here all summer. Literally, this is where people that live in a van down by the river live in their vans down by the river. But they've all gone for the season so far. There doesn't seem to be anybody else here other than one guy gold prospecting up there. And we're gonna walk around and see what this place has to offer. We just uh, had a little chat with Mike down there who's doing some gold mining. And I come out here this way to do some gold mining too. And he said they've had to really clean this place up because it was a meth lab parked here this summer. Like this is just crazy and this is why we have such a problem finding anywhere to camp and we have to resort to going to the city in the river valley secretly camping. We found a little ravine here and no surprise there's some fire pits evidence here because this is an awesome spot to camp pretty well everywhere around here is just so great and we're in such danger of them closing this all off and putting up a gate because of uh, people disrespecting it but we'll look around a little bit more then cook some dinner Clearly, right there is evidence. We are in beaver territory, and there's a lot of stumps like this. These beavers have been devouring wood like crazy around here, and it's just their natural habitat. So, back at camp, and we are on what's known as Crown Land in Canada. In the States, there's a similar thing called BLM land, which is managed but it's public land managed by the Bureau of Land Management. And you can go camping on it pretty well all you want after you satisfy certain permits, that type of thing. But the sticky issue comes with the county owning the access here. Now with all of the people that come out here and really have been trashing the place, the county can't stop you from camping from this water up to the high water mark but they can put up a gate so you'd have to get here by a boat or something, which we have built and will be taken on the river. So that's the, the main difficulty about it. But hopefully that won't happen. We'll see. Okay, time to start the fire. It's gonna be about minus six Celsius tonight. And in Fahrenheit that is, I'll do the calculation. I have got this flue open right here and that'll help it start to draft. I'm just using these uh, zip fire starters that people use for barbecues, because I like to do things as easy as possible. You may have noticed. A 
light them right in the package. And put some pieces of wood around. I don't have anything really, really small, but yeah. this will work just fine. So you may have noticed I'm not a bush crafter, but I do enjoy the outdoors. And however, however I make do to let that happen, what I do. So, we close that up, keep this one fully open, and once the draft starts, it's smooth sailing from there. Things have warmed up very nice in here. And for dinner tonight, we've got tenderloin, because that was on sale. And we've also got mac and cheese, or KD as we call it in Canada, because that was also on sale. But I have a trick up my sleeve. I have a humongous bucket of extra cheese for this. And if you haven't tried that yet, it's life changing. So we're gonna get this started when our water boils. And we're going to hunker down in a little bit and put on a movie, maybe Waiting for Guffman, that's a fun one. We've got our unnecessarily cheesy craft dinner or mac and cheese. I'll try to keep this warm. Well, I make a couple of steaks. These side racks are perfect for keeping things just the right temperature. Okay, here comes the steak, and I'm just going to do it right in the oven, right on the coals. Three minutes aside. Don't want this to smoke up the whole tent. rest for a little and then we'll slice right in. Extra cheesy and uh, and steak. Here we go. I hope no one is actually following me for health advice here. But steak looks just about okay. Mm. Oh yeah. I think that's just about perfect. I'm colorblind so I kind of have to rely on a few other senses here but this looks good to me. Mm -hmm. All right, just about time to hunker down. I'm going to let you guys know that with the wood stove, we are safe with a carbon monoxide alarm, and that'll go off if there's dangerous levels of carbon monoxide in the case of a back draft down the chimney or it's just not uh, drafting well. And we're not exactly in bear country, but still, 
I always take my bear spray and that can be useful for bears or any other animal on four legs or two if you know what I mean. That goes right beside me in the pouch and we're gonna put a movie on me and beautiful wife we are going to hunker down and then we're gonna see you guys in the morning thanks for watching so far that was a very good sleep the sleeping bag I used it's a cheap woods brand um, Canmore I think it's a four pounder and if I could figure out a way to squeeze that into my backpack I would be invincible for urban stealth camping but it takes up the whole backpack so I'll have to figure something else out making breakfast and I don't want to start a fire because I'm gonna be leaving here gonna pack up and head back to do some work this afternoon and my wife has to work as well so we're gonna not light this or the main stove in the cabin but I have my trusty hex hexamine burning solid fuel stove here and a good old trusty frozen breakfast burrito so today I brought a frying pan I have no restraints of the backpack I have the full use of a vehicle to carry my stuff around with so got a lot of stuff uh, picked this up from the dollar store it was on sale believe it or not and time to cook Breakfast on the river. Just doesn't get any better than this. Packing up to head back to reality for now, and so I can get this uploaded for Thursday's video today. And uh, if you like this type of stuff, please subscribe, or just follow along when you can to see what I'm uploading. Always up to something interesting, and usually a little bit crazy. So thanks for watching everything. Gonna take down the rest of this setup, and Start editing. Thanks, guys. Alright, just like that it packs up. We've got a little bit of space left to bring home some other people's garbage and throw it out for them. So, cheers everyone. See you next time.